World of Warcraft. <laughs> Being World of Warcraft kind of have a long history. Started a little over 10 years ago now. I began playing when my buddy Ian introduced it to me in the sixth grade, December 2006. I uh, got one of those 10 day free trial CDs from Walmart and uh, played it straight on until all the way from there, Burning Crusade came out only a couple months later, played it all the way through BC, into Wrath of the Lich King, stopped during Wrath of the Lich King, picked it back up towards the end of Wrath of the Lich King, played it all the way through Cataclysm, dropped it for Pandaria, picked it back up in Pandaria, played it into Warlords of Draenor, dropped it. <coughs> in that time, I have read all of the books, up, in, up to... Uh, the last book, Illidan, came out, didn't read it, didn't buy it, wanted nothing to do with it. Also in that time, I discovered, in high school, uh, high school I got my first job, my buddies also got their first job, we started hanging out in a, uh, comic book store because we were fucking losers, and... Well, Magic the Gathering never struck a chord with me. What did strike a chord with me was the World of Warcraft trading card game, and I made this binder myself, as you can tell. I don't know if you can see. It says trading card game. Uh, of course, working in high school means picking up a shift, like, on the weekend. Maybe two, if you're lucky. Uh, so I didn't have a ton of cash. And it wasn't until the final set that I really started buying stuff. So most of this is from the Time Walkers block. I said, I said set, I meant block, like the last three sets. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you before we get to find some of the boxes, some of the more tangible things. This is um, about mine originally. Uh, Sealed Drums of War thing. I believe this was the second set of the trading card game total. Second or third? It's like, like first, second, or third. And then this box here, uh, Beyond the Dark Portal, or Through the Dark Portal, sorry, uh, was another one of the very early ones. This says 2007, so this may be the second, and then this says 2008, so this be the third. And this one isn't actually the um, original stuff, like I've got the um, manual here, and like all these cards are um, period accurate, but it's not the, um, the set proper as it should have been. I got it secondhand. What can you do? What can you do? They're not all going to be sealed. So, Drums of War Through the Dark Portal. Very neat. Just as collector's items. Uh, Heroes of Azeroth. This is the first one. I believe. Yeah, 2006. This is the first one. Horns blaze through the Eastern Kingdoms, calling the Alliance to arm, and the drums of Duratan, or Duratar hasten the horde to prepare for the looming conflict ahead. Glorious battles, prized treasures, and dominion over all Azeroth are on the table. Heroes will be made. Legends will be written. Now, this one is a total fucking mess of random shit. Like, this is from... These are from, like, the last block. Like, there's no reason that should be mixing with this stuff. This, uh... Yeah. I got this from a guy who was, um... When it was announced that the game was ending, he was looking at all of his stuff. And I wanted the box because I thought it was neat. So, that's... It does, it does have the original, uh... <laughs> this is one, something about these sets, is they came with these massive hero cards. <laughs> massive. Just stupid. So the whole idea of World of Warcraft trading card game is that you have a uh, a hero. 
that you play as rather than having like your life points directly in like Magic the Gathering or Yu-Gi-Oh or some shit, you are playing this character. And uh, up until the last block, none of the characters were entirely, um, you know, creations of the trading card game. Uh, and then in the last block, every hero was a notable character from lore, except for a couple of them. But this here is Gorebelly, so this is a horde warrior, and his special ability is for one for one resource, flip Gorebelly. So you would have him like this on the table, and you flip him over, and now you can no longer you can't use that ability again. But if this is a passively active ability, you pay three less the next time you strike a melee weapon this turn. Okay, so it's just so you flip him over. So for one, and then. Um, so for the cost of one resource, it's three resources less to strike with a melee weapon, so that's pretty alright for one turn. But anyways, um, moving on. It's been a while since I played this too. This ended, um, this ended before Hearthstone began, the context. They, they dropped this and then they launched Hearthstone. Which I will never play. Um, we got a couple of um, specialty things here we can show off uh, before we get into like the. Oh, we're still talking about sets and things like that. Uh, I think I've only got the three. Yeah, so I got the, the last two and then the first one. So this is Anixia's Lair. This is a raid deck. Nixia obviously being one of the first raids in World War, one of the most famous like raids. And the idea is that you and a bunch of your buddies get together and uh, play against this deck. And so Nixia has da -da -da, a bunch of stages, three stages. And as the game progresses, it gets increasingly difficult. So, so like, so her uh, her stage one is um, for ten resources, flip Anexia, and then she just kills somebody. <laughs> Doesn't inflict damage, just kills somebody. So she has her own deck of cards. Um, like this is all whelps. These are all. Um, You know, little, little Anixian whelps that'll fuck you up. And then there's cards, like these would be her abilities, I suppose. Exhaust all opposing allies. Opponents choose a player, prevent all damage that would be dealt to heroes this turn. Heroes and allies in that party's player's party this turn. Oh, that's pretty fucking cool. Um, <clears throat> so this is like a fun thing. So you and... Um, You and a bunch of your friends get together and try and beat the dragon, is the idea. Uh, let's see. Object of the game. For the Anixia player, the object of the game is simple. Destroy all those who dare to oppose you. A raiding pl if a raiding player is destroyed... A, okay. A raiding player is destroyed if his or her hero takes fatal damage, or if that player has to draw and his or her deck is empty. When a rating player's hero is destroyed, all the cards are removed from the game. This includes abilities that are attached to all the player's cards. For the rating players, the object of the game is work together to destroy Anixia. The Anixia player is destroyed if the Stage 3 Anixia hero card takes fatal damage. If Anixia is destroyed, it's a victory for all rating players, even those who fell before the dragon was defeated. So you gotta kill her once, for 20, again for 30, and then finally for 50. You gotta kill her three times. This is pretty fun. It's a fun thing. It's almost impossible to win, but it's fun. And then uh, the others, like, there were two people, or two companies, I shouldn't say people, that were responsible for the World of Warcraft trading card game. The originals were Upper Deck Entertainment. See the logo there. And then later, it, the, you know, 
Guardians were handed off to a company called Cryptozoic. I played during the Cryptozoic era. All of these I've shown you thus far are from the Upper Deck period. But uh, so we're getting into Cryptozoic stuff now, and I've got two the two Cryptozoic raid decks here. Also showing this. I've got a sealed copy of the Scarlet Monastery, which is a dungeon deck, which, uh, this is a cryptozoic thing. There were a couple of these. There was, um, Scarlet Monastery, um, oh, fuck, what's the name of that, uh, keep in Silver Pine Forest? One with werewolves and the dead mines. This was the most fun to me, so that's the one I went out and bought. Uh, but my friends already had it, so I didn't open it. <laughs> I was, I, I seriously thought I was gonna collect this shit, and then it just kind of went away. Anyway, so this is another raid deck, this time from the fine folks of Cryptozoic. This is called Battle of the Aspects. This is the Cataclysm uh, raid deck, where you're fighting Deathwing. The box, noticeably cheaper. All cardboard. This one, like heavy duty outer cardboard, like very, very thick, like solid as hell. Look at that. And then the inside is plastic. With this, it's, um, you know, very, it looks cheaper. It just it looks cheaper, it feels cheaper. But anyways, so Battle of the Aspects. This time around, you, um, I believe. Oh, Jesus. You know, I don't think I ever played this one. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, all right. So there's... Why the fuck? There's a Deathwing card, but then you're fighting Deathwing. Deathwing has four stages, 200 health total. But then you play as a, you play as the dragon aspect. So I'm just this this threw me off completely. It's like why would you be able to play as Deathwing when you're fighting Deathwing? I mean that's cool art. Uh, you know Alexstrasza, Caligos, Nazdormu, Ysera. Always thought the uh, dragon lore. Warcraft was pretty cool. Most of it comes from the uh, expanded universe novels, which are dubious canonically at this stage, but who cares? Who fucking cares? And then the next one is the Caverns of Time. And um, to go with this, the idea was um, you play these and get a, a treasure pack. When you play them in a shop, you can get a, a, loot, a loot box. So these three are still sealed. I never opened these three. But I did open three of them to see if I could get any of the goodies. And I didn't, of course. Of course I didn't. But, uh, you get a bunch of, bunch of foilies armor and... Uh, yeah, everything, everything in a in a, like a loot box was um was a foily. But yeah, there's nothing decent in here. <laughs> nothing, nothing good. Foilies. The problem with foilies is they all warp. You know, they all bend. Okay. Um. So I got all this. They were marked down at the end uh, because um, he was just trying to off stock on the other shop. Anyways, so this was the this was the big joke about um, about this one. This came out as everybody was like, "Oh my god, I just bought it to jerk off to this shirt." Kids, yeah, Echo of Tyrond, Tyronda. Echo of Sylvanas, Elganus, Aeonus, Manoroth, Murazond, and 
Archimond the Defiler. This one plays different than all the others. As you can see, I never even opened it. <laughs> of Ronin. Mass Revival. Mm. Oh, I never even showed you how the cards are in here. Oh god, it's so cheap. Like, that's it. These little cardboard flaps look like, like a cheap, shitty board game. <clears throat> Caverns of Time. Raid Rules. The Caverns of Time Raid deck is an automated deck designed to be played against three players, the Raiders, using class starter decks, champion decks, or constructed decks. All the Raiders need to do is follow the instructions on the raid cards and overcome the challenges that await them within the Caverns of Time. To begin the raid, select three random cavern heroes, shuffle them, and set them face down as the hero stack. Reveal the first caverns hero, but do not resolve any entrance powers if that, that hero, if any. Shuffle the cavern stack and place it face down near the hero stack. During each cavern's turn, you will flip over and place some number of cards from the top of the cavern stack to re represent the abilities, allies, and events that the raiders must overcome. Okay, so you don't play against all of these, you only play against three. So you could be playing against Manoroth, Murazond, and Archimond, or uh, Ashara, Tyronda, and Sylvanas. That's neat. It's a different idea, as opposed to the M. Other raid decks, where it's like fight big bad or a procession of big bads. Uh, there was a Nax Ramus raid that is fucking impossible to beat. There's so many bosses. Uh, I've got this uh, the Feast of Winter Vale collector set. Collector set. Uh, all the cards that were in here, I stuck in my binder. I'll go through that a bit later. In here, I've got cards in there, apparently. Hmm. Okay. I kept a, I kept a single wrapper from every set that I bought. Cards in There's War of the Elements, Throne of Tides, Crown of Heavens, Tomb of the Forgotten, Tomb of the Forgotten, War of the Ancients, Trail of the Guardian, and then these are all the Reign of Fire packs that I had. Because Reign of Fire, the final set, the only cards you could buy in the set were the ones you pre-ordered. I pre-ordered the the uh, the box, the, the Epic Collection box, so I got a bunch of cards, but. Um, this was it, this was my entire, like nobody was playing at this point because you couldn't get the cards anymore. It was done, discontinued, right? And like I did play a bit before the, um, the World Breaker. So, yeah, no, I played, I played through Aftermath because this was Aftermath, was um, Tomb of the Forgotten, Throne of Tides, Crown of the Heavens. I played in the World Breaker set. But not as much, obviously. Throne, uh, Tomb of the Forgotten, fuck that set. Fuck that set and its stupid fucking Sentinel abilities. Just, just greasy fucking shit. The balancing is abysmal. <laughs> just some abysmal, abysmal balancing. So that's that. Uh, then we're just into some collections of cards here. This is, uh, I've got one of the uh, booster pack uh, display cases for um, War of the Ancients, but this is all just, all just cards, you know? Uh, yeah, like two, this is Tomb and, uh, Betrayal. Just assorted cards. Uh, 
don't really sure anybody would be interested in going through every single card I've got since there were, there's quite a lot of them and they're all very disorganized. So there's that box and then I've got a Tomb of the Forgotten box here. That's got a ha 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 starter deck, starter deck, and two loot boxes, treasure packs. So this is um, the Battle of the Aspects treasure pack that came with the raid, I believe. And or maybe I bought that. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I bought that. And then this is a treasure pack from before the raid sets were out. And uh, I was after buying a couple of them. And I just stuck them all in together. Some of these cards are worth, were, you know, decent. Like Baron Ashbury, used that one a lot. Uh, Stormwind Investigator, that's from that stupid fucking, yeah, yeah. Horatio Lane. Uh, some cool shit, like, uh, Herod the Scarlet Champion. Scarlet Monastery really takes me back. Uh, Cookies Cutter, and another Herod, Dog Whistle, Shattered Hand Ascent, Nether Blast, Shadow Fang Keep, Shadow Fang Keep, that was the other dungeon deck, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> so most of the time you bought a treasure pack, it was, um, it was one of these, but, uh, Like with most most uh, trading card games, you could buy pre-constructed decks to get your feet on the ground with, and that's what these were. So these are the only, I think I've got a couple more in one of the epic collections. I think I've got a, uh, a warlock and a hunter. But so this is a undead mage starter deck, and this is a troll warrior, and for the same simplicity, we'll go through the troll warrior here. I'm not opening these. <clears throat> So, contents include one hero card, Troll Horde Troll Warrior, Raja Sul the Relentless, one tournament legal 60 card deck, including three rare cards, Edge of Oblivion, Champion's Shout, and Grandma Dead Sea, one, randomly cra one random crafting card, or randomly insuited, inserted loot TM card, a uh, rule book and a quick start guide, one Time Walker's Betrayal Guardian Booster Pack. So, this comes with a... Uh, a booster pack too, but uh, yeah, there was one thing that came with these. Uh, you'd get these. Um, what were they called? Crafting cards, where you're supposed to like collect a shit ton of them and send them away to Cryptozoic, and they'd send you something back. Or loot cards. And loot cards are one of the famous things about the World of Warcraft trading card game because it's one of those things Blizzard does to incentivize you as a WoW player to buy their other shit. Uh, a good time to go to the binder because I do have a couple of loot cards and I know at least one of them was worth a half decent bit of money at one point or another. Uh, here somewhere. Oh yeah, here it is. Or no, not not it. But here are some crafting cards like. Sigil of the Guardian. Collect six of these sigils and redeem to redeem for an exclusive crafted card at www.wowtcg.cryptozoic.com slash crafting. And I've got four. Four. They were unique to every set. Like that's Sigil of the Guardian, so that's from Betrayal of the Guardian. I've got Sigil of the Time Markers, that's from uh War of the Ancients, I believe. Where are my loot cards? Where are my loot cards? Ah, oh, here we go. And so I'll pick up the phone now. Let's see if you can see any of this. Yeah, so that's, uh, this was the one that I think was worth something. Dark Portal Hearthstone. And then these three. I had a couple more, but I think I gave them to my parents or somebody else who plays World of Warcraft, because wasn't playing WoW at that stage. I was quite done with WoW. Anyways, <clears throat> I have also got, finishing off the box things, I've got a sealed box of uh, Betrayal of the Guardian boosters. Me and my uh, friend, 
who were the last ones in our friend group to still be playing this game at the end, both bought, well, we each bought one of the two final boxes that were um, in the store that we went to. Uh, he opened his, no, there were three, we each bought one and then split on the second. And we opened every booster pack in the in the third or in the third box. He pulled Archimon. <laughs> I got nothing. So that was lame. <clears throat> and then there's the epic collections, and these were what everybody lost their shit about every time the new set came out. These were what you carry your cards around in. I got the Rain of Fire one. And yeah. So you'd get this box, and inside there'd be basically a shit ton of booster cards. And it came, they came with these little um little dividers to uh, organize your entire collection. Like from that set is the idea. He's not supposed to be there, so you're an alliance ally. So yeah, it goes like divided by class and then divided alliance horde, quest location, equipment, and neutral cards. And then I've got, here are those other two uh, starter decks. These are open, obviously. So Worgen, Warlock, and a Dwarf Hunter. So that's, that's that. So I do still possess the means to play a full game of these if I desire. But these, uh, this box here is just mostly um, holding uh, more random cards that I don't think I ever bothered to properly organize. Is that it was pretty disheartening when they canceled the game, you know, after you had spent so much time and money and money on it, it you didn't really want to well this I believe is where I kept my decks, yes because Rain of Fire as I previously went over didn't really happen and then uh, but that's not yeah no, I'm, okay, I've, also, I've got a lot of decks in this one because because Rain of Fire didn't happen uh, it was just as well to use the box for other shit, so I've got ton of deck holders. <laughs> a ton of deck holders. This is the Winter Veil vale one that came with the Winter Veil vale set I showed you earlier. So that I think, yeah, that's just random cards. And then this was, this was my first starting deck. Uh, Dwarf Hunter, or Dwarf Warrior, I should say. Dwarf Hunter was my uh, in-game character. Uh, yeah, this is all... None of these cards are organized. No, they all fall over. I guess there's nothing to hold them up. Put you back there. I think this one is, uh, is a deck. Nope, not a deck. You can tell it's a deck if it's got sleeves. <laughs> Only had so many sleeves. But, oh, this isn't... This isn't actually a deck, this is just uh, spare sleeves and some more uh, crafting cards. I got a ton of Sigil of, Sigil of the Time Walker, I could have spent the, sent those in. These are penny sleeves, these are the, uh, the cheap ones that you get like for a dollar, for a hundred of them. And I had these blue ones that I was actually using for my, my final deck. Starting off, I had a... <laughs> absolutely garbage deck where the whole point was I just wanted a deck of dwarf cards. Every card in the deck had to be a dwarf, if at all possible. And I've still got most of those in the <laughs> in the binder. It was, of course, not viable. Uh, so these little um, booklets you get with your epic collection, and it was like a um, catalog of every single card from the set and with a little check mark at the bottom so it's like yes I have one two three four of these anywho let's see how I'll show you on my actual decks though I wonder if I 
constructed it. Even. So this one's pretty straightforwardly laid out here. So there's a, you know, these are the dividers unused and then deck box, deck box. Is that Magic the Gathering cards? Jesus. Oh no. Oh yes, maybe it is. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Red sleeves in the red box. That's nice. Yeah, it is. It's a white deck. My oh my. <laughs> I no excuses. I have no excuses. Anyways, so at the end I had a warlock deck. Where are those? Warlock deck and a human warrior deck. What's right here? Oh, this is more magic shit. I guess I had my magic shit in these two cheapo deck boxes. You don't have anything in here? More random cards? Yeah, more random cards. Okay. See you later, Archie. Uh, so this was a. Um, I can't remember how I got this deck box, but I think it was a prize or something. Just, uh, everybody hated this, um, this Uther artwork because it's based on Uther's appearance in the Second War instead of his uh, more iconic Warcraft 3 appearance. Anyways, uh, so I was playing a human warrior deck uh, with Anduin Lothar as my hero. This was, of course, in that last block I have a shit ton of... Those were, those were some cards that I would switch in and out depending on my mood that day. These are human warrior tokens. That was the what the whole deck was based around. So, Lothar. Um, the whole idea was based around flooding the, um, the play field with these um, human tokens. Because I also had these guys. So there were these fellas who summoned the tokens into play. Uh, then this guy who uh, readied all human tokens so you could like attack with them all, then uh, ready them up to defend you at the start of your enemy's turn. You had this, this lady who plus one, plus one for every human ally you controlled. So she got like increasingly stronger based on how many of those you had out. Then you have Hugh Man, who uh, gave them all a boost. Uh, then you have quests like this, where it's um, if based on how many humans you're controlling. Then you got this uh, ability, Glory to the Alliance. Put two one-one human at warrior ally tokens into play with protector. So just a lot of, oh, and then this was the, um, this was one of the cool things. I had a card that would deal damage, like one damage to all like enemy. Oh, here's another thing that summoned tokens. It would like deal damage to everyone on the opposing side of the field. Is that called the arms? What the fuck happened to that card? Anyways, there was like a thing where I could... Where I could tick off damage to everyone on the field all at one time. And then I would destroy them. With this. The problem is, with Executioner's Strikes, this card was really, really hard to get a hold of. It was very limited supply. And people were real stingy about trading it off to me because they knew I had a deck built around it and everybody's a cunt. Everybody's a cunt. That was a lot of fun. Um, for a time. But like I said, it wasn't the most competitively viable deck because people had a tendency to go online and look up like what deck won a tournament. And then they would just build a deck around whichever deck won last tournament online and they ordered the cards on eBay. Which was never fun to me. <laughs> There's nothing nothing fun about that. Like I understand that you enjoy winning, but how do you feel good knowing that you're just you know you're not doing it fair and square sort of thing. 
this this one's in penny sleeves, but uh, this was a, a uh, warlock deck where I was playing as Medivh. And I can't remember what the um, the gimmick of this deck was. I think it was just because I had a whole lot of high end warlock cards, and I always thought warlocks were cheap. <laughs> Warlocks had abilities like um, Banish Soul, where it was just like, get done. Uh, another Apocalypse. Each opponent chooses one. Your hero deals 10 shadow damage to his hero, or destroy all resources he controls, or destroy all abilities, allies, and equipment he controls. So either... Yeah, that would, like, that's, a, that's a 5 cost. That's ridiculous. Bottled Void. That was a good card. I've got a couple of those. And Banished Soul, yeah. So I think the whole thing was based around um, Bottled Void here. The, yeah, this was based around d dealing like shadow damage directly to the enemy. I won. I came in second place in a tournament with this deck. And I would have won, but I forgot to tap Medivh to... Um, do one damage to him. I lost by one point. <sighs> what can you do, eh? <laughs> yeah, this was it. Um, Shroud of the ne Nethermancer. I had this equipped, and it was uh, tap. Your hero deals two shadow damage to target hero and heals two damage from itself. If I had done that, I would have won the tournament, but I didn't. I didn't. And as soon as my turn ended, somebody was standing behind me and was like, you just lost. And I was like, uh, awesome. Awesome. So that's, uh, that's that, I suppose. And I didn't really go through any of the cards individually, but I feel like that's kind of boring and shitty. But I do have one more thing that I can show off here, and that's... Play mats and uh, Godzilla collecting cards. This is the Rain of Fire one. It came in a plastic, you know, cover, which none of the others did for whatever reason. I assume they did this because it was the last set. But I never bothered taking it out. Uh, the other ones I've got here. This is the. This was the big draw buying the uh, the epic collection, which was you got the play mats to play on. It's essentially a giant mouse pad. More of the ancients. Trail of the Guardian. This is the one I played on the most, I think. I was when I was into WoW, I was big into Warcraft too. Like, that was my favorite part of the Warcraft lore. Second War. And then this is the um, non-epic collection one. This is a Battleground mat that I won at a as a door prize, I think. And it's Hogger. It's not the, it's not the best one around, but it's still pretty cool. It's neat that it's less uh, common, I think. I guess we can go through my um, binder now, if uh, anybody's still watching this. The amount of shit I have piled on this table right now, my god. <clears throat> Get this back in the box. We do this. Yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> uh, I can't flip it around either, can I? Nope. Nope, okay. Well, this will have to do. So these are all hero cards. I had a hero of every, like I had every hero in the last block. Uh, both of their, they had two, two releases of the, um, the final hero cards. Actually, I think they had three, like, 
like War of the Ancients had these hero cards, and then Trail of the Guardian had these hero cards, and then Reign of Fire would have had another one, but, you know. So some of the art was better. Like, uh, like, you know, Uther, for sake of example. The first Uther one nobody really liked, and Medivh's was god-awful. And then you flip forward and see, uh, you know, like this and this, and those are cool. But then, where is Sylvanas? Oh, the first Sylvanas was, uh, yeah, it was like High Elf Sylvanas. And then the Horde Sylvanas was, uh, I don't know, it's still Alliance, but look at that fucking art. That is awful. That is god awful. Like, it's anime as fuck. I just hate it. And then you had, um, so for certain, like, classes, race, racial class combinations that didn't exist prior to very recently, you got these, like, made-up fucking guys, like, Bar Barador, Eldrunna, so are the following, yeah. I had so there's another Baron Ashbury in one of those treasure boxes, but, uh, yeah, so you got those, and location cards are neat. Uh, Doom Hammer. It's got the double-sided saw spells here. Somebody had a deck built around that fucking guy. This is, this is um. These are all from the War of the Ancients story, so these are all together. <laughs> like I read that I was reading those books at the time. The End Time. That's from Nazdormu awaits you at the End Time in the distant future. I can help you get there if you so choose. That was a, that was the raid. Uh, and then these are all um. Like, Cadgar, Danith, Trollbane, Kurdran, and Trallian are the, um, from the Draenor expedition in Warcraft 2. These are, you know, the heroes of Azeroth who went to the Orcish homeworld to destroy them or whatever. And I've got, this is my only full art card, Aegwyn, Medivh's Ma. It's a really good card. I, it's a good thing I have the uh, full art and not the regular one, so I know exactly what the, uh, <laughs> the card's effect is. And then Dalen Proudmoore. Another location card. That's another legend, or it's a legendary weapon. It's only an epic card. And uh, you know, some more, some more stuff. And then these are my loot cards. So you got uh, this was the only one I think was worth money. I showed you these earlier, didn't I? Yeah, Dark Portal, Hearthstone, Floating Spellbook, Eye of Legion. These were just like companion pets that flew around behind you. I think this was actually also a companion pet. But yeah, that was that was kind of like part of the, the appeal of the WoW TCG. Wow, you get this cool shit for your... Um... <laughs> Gazrilla. Ack, ack, there goes Zulfrak. Go, go, Gazrilla. <laughs> Legend... Legacy of Betrayal. I swear to God that was in my Warlock deck. I don't know why I took it out. Felon, that's a clone. Uh, there's just more... More stuff. I doubt there's anything in here that's worth anything. Feel the Riddler. Fucking Murlocs. God, I hated Murloc decks. All right, so now we're into the real shit. This is uh, my my dwarf deck. That was my, um, that starter deck we had out earlier. Strom deck of Ironforge. This was my hero card. And then I had built a deck entirely of um, dwarves. So I've got Magni from the last block, or from, no, it's from Worldbreaker. And then Magni from one of the, uh, Later upper decks? No, that's Cryptozoic. Okay. So so these two Magnus, and there was a Magni from the first set, Heroes of Azeroth, that I wanted to get and I never could. And uh, Muradin. Oh, 
that's from that's from uh, Reign of Fire. Well, I was lucky. <laughs> but then I've got uh, some... Doric was great. I had a couple of Dorics. Uh, Avarice Jade Stone. Hearth of Hammer Flame. She was a go-to. That card was a fucking pain in the ass. Uh, yeah, so... All these dwarves. All of these dwarves. And some of them actually worked well together. <laughs> this guy, um... Scrapper Iron Bane. There was another character... Or there was another card where it was like something Iron Bane. And the joke was that they were brothers. Yeah. That's it. This was this was the fun part of WoW TCG for me. <sighs> Wasn't exactly a cohesive deck. It it kind of worked sometimes. Some guys. Some monster cards and, and little horde shit. I traded most of my horde cards away for um, other alliance cards. Worms. Ah, okay. Melee weapons you control have plus one, plus five attack. You pay five less to strike for melee weapon. So that's not what I was thinking about. Oh, this I was definitely using this. Your hero has protector. Your hero has plus five while you control equipment. And I had um those shields. The hell was that attack? It was like Whirlwind or something. Fuck. Uh, there was an ability, a warrior ability, where you de dealt damage to everybody. Ah! No, that's because that's ancient. <laughs> That's from Dark Portal. Hmm. Oh, whatever. It's not like it matters now, anyways. A lot of these I got from some of my friends had like old cards, so there's stuff like just random, uh, random drums of war, random, uh, random heroes of Azeroth cards, just random shit, random, random shit. And these are some quests. That was in the that was in the dwarf deck. <laughs> that was in the dwarf deck. And that's. That's the end. That's, that's that's my entire that's my entire World of Warcraft trading card game collection. I'm holding this upside down, aren't I? No. Nope? Okay. That's it. It's quite a lot here. How long is this video? Oh my god, that's like an hour. What time is it? Jeez, I get one for work. I, uh, I hope that if you watched this, you got some degree of enjoyment out of it. All I can think about now is what was that? What was that ability? Execution strikes, and I had the shield. Oh, 
I've got no abilities in here. Except Glory to the Alliance and Executioner Strike. Maybe I traded it away. Because I built this deck when um, War of the Ancients came out. And then I restructured it after uh, Betrayal of the Guardian came out. Because it was no longer... There was basically a counter to the deck. But once... like. After I had restructured it, it wasn't really, it didn't, it wasn't as good as it was. I wasn't, I wasn't really winning anymore at that stage. Yeah, there's a nostalgic feeling. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of towards the end of where Warcraft had an appeal to me. But I, I do still get that, um, I don't know, there's kind of a warmth and a familiarity to Warcraft for me. It's, you know, been, I've been so familiar with it for so long that it feels like, um, I don't know. I guess that's it.